One of the things that I think is so great about our country is the opportunity for upward mobility in society. Uh, more than in any other country in human history, persons have the opportunity to better themselves as a result of the freedoms we enjoy. Now, not everyone has the same advantages. Clearly, there are disparities. Some people, for a variety of reasons, have more advantages than others. And these can range from a person's natural ability to intelligence, to the way a person was raised, their family background, and so on. It's fair to say that most of our children here at Ascension Parish in Overland Park, Kansas, have advantages that other kids in the world just don't have. And this is certainly something for which to be grateful. Nevertheless, the United States of America is a place where a person can be born poor without any advantages at all, and yet make something of themselves and live a pretty good life. The country is fertile ground for individual citizens to pursue excellence in the sciences, in the arts, in business. Uh, now, this is not going to be a Tony Robbins slash motivational speaker type homily. Uh, it's not a homily espousing the almighty dollar. Uh, now, we have heard, or most of us have heard, the saying that money is the root of all evil. We've all heard this, right? Or most of us have. Uh, this is actually not true. This is not accurate. Now, the love of money, this can certainly be the root of a host of evils, to be sure, the love of money. But just to be clear, money in and of itself is not evil. Uh, the Christian idea of success, of striving for excellence and not settling for mediocrity has a place for money. Being wealthy is not a sin, and money can even help persons move along the pathway to heaven if their wealth is used wisely and accompanied by the proper motivation. In Mark's gospel today, Jesus predicts his passion and death for now the second time. And for the second time, his apostles respond in a way that is less than pleasing to our Lord. They blow it again. Uh, if you recall in last week's gospel, Jesus predicted his passion and death, and Peter rebuked him, only to be roundly scolded by the Lord. If you'll recall, Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. And then in today's gospel, the, the disciples respond by arguing about who will be the greatest among them. They don't seem at all concerned about what Jesus has just told them. Instead, they become preoccupied with privilege, prestige, and honor. You see, they still think of Jesus as a revolutionary who is going to overthrow the enemies of Israel. Well, he is, and he does, but not in the way that they're thinking. Jesus calls the twelve, he sits down, which was the customary posture for a teacher in this day, by the way, he would sit down, and he says to them, okay, you guys want to be great? You guys want to be on top? Have all kinds of honor, prestige, power? Be last of all and servant of all. Friends, this was a radically unconventional idea in the ancient world. Humility and meekness were not seen as something admirable or seen as something to be desired, but they were signs of weakness. Those in authority would have expected to be served and showered with honors. No one in their right mind would aspire to be a servant. Fast forward to today. We can fall into this same mindset ourselves. We can fall into the trap of thinking that greatness and being at the top of the heap are the same thing. But Jesus is telling us today that they're not. That true greatness is in serving others. True greatness is putting God first, everyone else second, and ourselves last. Our model for this, of course, is Jesus Christ Himself, who said, I have come not to be served, but to serve. He doesn't abolish ambition. He just simply redefines it. And so we should want to be the best, I don't care, whatever it is, teachers, accountants, physicians, pilots, physical therapists, not for love of money, but for love of God and out of service to our brothers and sisters, especially those who are most in need. This is the point 
that Jesus is making by taking the child in his arms. He says, whoever receives, whoever receives one child such as this in my name receives me. To receive a child meant accepting, loving, and serving those persons most in need who have practically no capacity to return the favor. Our Lord identifies with those who are the most insignificant in the eyes of the world, so much so that he himself is mysterious, mysteriously present wherever they are welcomed. While he had the authority of God, he was God, Jesus never used his authority to run roughshod over others. Instead, he used it to serve the poor, the sick, the marginalized, and those living on the fringe of society. We see this over and over and over again in our Gospels, Jesus providing this example to us. May we, in our own lives, strive for greatness and never settle for mediocrity, but not so that we might be praised or lauded for our efforts, but so that we may follow in the footsteps of Christ himself, who is the ultimate servant.